Oh, when I put Kim Pure in the tank, my water clarity is, is really nice. My fish and my coral seem to respond to it really well. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. And today I want to talk about an aquarium disease, a saltwater disease called marine velvet. And along with marine ick, it is one of the most dangerous and unfortunately common diseases that can attack your aquarium. Sadly, I learned this the hard way with my new 180 gallon tank. If you've been following along with my series here, the build has been going great and I'll put links to the playlist in the description with this video. But let me say that I've been around long enough and that I should know better than to do what I did, which is to add a whole bunch of fish all at once without quarantine. On the other hand, I've done this many times and I've never been stung like I was this time. First, I'll tell you about what happened to me. Then we'll take a look at more about the disease and then we'll take a look at the precautions so you can protect your aquarium and maybe avoid my mistake. Now, in my case, I suddenly found myself with a little bit of extra cash, which never happens, and I had a brand new tank with established and healthy fish that had been transferred from my 120. I moved up to a 180. Water parameters were stable and everything in this aquarium was thriving. The corals, the fish, everything. Now, in terms of preparation, in addition to seed bacteria, I'd been able to move some of the filtration media and all of the corals from the previous aquarium. Using this system, I projected that I'd be able to avert the typical cycling that occurs with a new aquarium in terms of the ammonia and the nitrites and so forth. Now I did figure I would go through a series of diatom and algae outbreaks and that's pretty much happened, but I didn't expect to see a dangerous ammonia spike. Several tests have shown that was the case. I was right about that. And that's important because one question will be whether bad water weakened the fish to make them vulnerable to this disease or if it was introduced by the new fish or maybe even the shrimp or the crabs that I put in the tank, which is something new to think about. And when I say something new to think about, things like shrimp and hermit crabs don't get ick or velvet, but that doesn't mean that the parasite might not come into your aquarium riding in their shells. Anything that's wet, which we'll talk about later, can be an issue. But the major debate comes down to this. Is ick always in your aquarium and healthy fish are fighting it off because they're healthy and they only get ick when something stresses them like overcrowding or bad water parameters? Or is the parasite something that can be completely eradicated from your system. And when you go online and start reading the forums, there are equal numbers of people who have apparently conclusive evidence that both cases are true. And this probably deserves its own video, its own fin cast, and that's something I'll consider down the line. But for now, all I know is that it got in my aquarium and it was a major problem. All I know is that I added a whole bunch of fish, shrimp, and hermit crabs to the 180 all at once, and within days, all of the fish started dying. Both the new fish, and then eventually, even the long established healthy fish in the tank. Now let me say that the new fish did not seem stressed in any way. There was no aggression, everything was eating and behaving normally. And for three days, this aquarium was exciting to watch. Now among the fish I added, was a colony of six carpenter's flash harasses. After three days, I noticed ick-like white spots on them, and then they started dying. When there were three left, they appeared to be ick-free, as in no spots, but then those three all died anyway. After that, the disease ran through the tank, all the new fish died, and then my long-established fish became ill. The Niger trigger died, the pair of frostbite clowns, the hippo tang died, I had enjoyed these fish for years and years. I want to say six or seven years for the hippo tang, but all of this die off happened in less than two weeks. The sailfin tang that I've had for about 11 years was covered in velvet, but somehow so far seems to have survived along with the yellow tang. Also two green chromis and a large watchman goby. All of them have been free of symptoms for over a week now. They've regained their color, they've regained what appears to be their health, and I certainly have my fingers crossed. 
Now, I got to tell you, this has been trying for me. I, I've literally been heartbroken over this. I, I think a lot of people who don't keep aquariums don't understand how attached that you get to your fish and, and how responsible you feel for their well-being, right? And have you ever noticed that? Have you ever had a situation where something was going bad with your tank, or in my case, nearly catastrophic in, in aquarium terms, and nobody really seems to get it, nobody really seems to care, you're kind of walking around like, man, I can't believe this is happening, da 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 da, -da. And, and folks just look at you like it was a fish. Yeah, well, you know, um, I do. I feel, I feel responsible, I feel guilty, and I do feel a certain sense of loss. So uh, I hope you never have to go through this, but I'm betting if you've been in the hobby for a while, uh, you probably have. As I said to uh, a fellow longtime Aquarius, man, I just had velvet go through my tank, and he said, yep, welcome to the hobby. So made me feel good that this guy just kind of said, yeah, it happens. But So how do you know if you have velvet versus ick? And what do you do about it? So technically, the experts say you need to look through a microscope to tell the difference. But I can tell you that I've had fish get ick and survive just fine for a long time, swimming around the tank with spots on them, especially hippo tangs, powder blue tangs, powder brown tangs. Uh, I've seen those fish carry ick for a long time and never seem any worse for the wear. They just had white spots on them and eventually they would recover. But I can tell you that is not the case with velvet. Here are the symptoms with velvet. Now like ick, they may have white spots. Mine certainly did in the beginning. But the name velvet comes from that white, or tan, or golden, or just an overall dusty appearance on the body, the fins, and in my case, even the eyes. Uh, the fish toward the end will breathe heavily near the surface, and usually at this time, uh, it's too late. They'll refuse food, and, and you can see this is near the end for them. Uh, early on, you'll see fish scratching on the rocks or decorations, but a lot of things cause that, so you need to see more than just that symptom. And then often, death occurs a day or less after the visible symptoms are noticed, so you don't have time to do anything. It's believed that death comes from infestation in the gills. The velvet is caused by a parasite that is a dinoflagellate, and like it, it goes through multiple life stages. There's a free swimming stage called dinospores, and that's when you can zap this bug. There's a feeding stage when they're actually on the fish. There's a cyst stage where they then drop off to the substrate and begin asexual division. And then they reach something called the palmella stage where there is rapid multiplication. So it goes 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, uh, a geometric progression, and all of a sudden your aquarium is just full of these little bugs. Now, according to Wet Web Media, which is often my go-to source, um, this is a, the stage where invertebrates that I mentioned a little while ago, such as crabs and shrimp, can carry the disease, meaning it could come in on your cleanup crew. Really, anything wet, even a net uh, that was wet that came from an infected area, uh, the parasite doesn't affect these invertebrates, but that doesn't mean it couldn't be in the water that's inside their shells. So you got to be careful. This parasite is an opportunistic hitchhiker. Like I said, anything wet can be a problem. And in my opinion, once the symptoms occur, occur especially if you've got a full reef tank, there's almost nothing you can do. Uh, you can take all the rocks and all the coral out and catch the fish and remove them to quarantine. But because you don't want to hurt the corals, most of the choices that you have to kill the bug once it's on the fish would also hurt the corals. And I'm not so sure that there's anything that would save the fish at that point anyway. If you're determined, like I said, you can remove the fish, do a freshwater bath for up to five minutes, that can make the parasite in the trophant stage drop off of the fish. Then if you remove them to a separate aquarium, aquarium copper treatments can work at various stages of the bug's life cycle. Formalin can be effective. Lowered salinity or hyposalinity can affect the parasite without impacting the fish. So in your hospital tank, you'd be slowly lowering the salinity from, you started at 1.025, then we go down to 023, then 021, then 019, all the way down to 1.009. But you got to do that over a period of days so you don't shock the fish. And then hopefully uh, at this two point a day system, this uh, should work with ick. In my opinion, with velvet, 
you may not have that long. So it's not a great option because my fish died so quickly. I'd notice something on the fish and then that night it would be dead. Uh, this treatment does last one to three months if you do the hyposalinity, slowly raising that salinity then back to normal before returning the fish to the display tank. So in terms of prevention, which is really worth a pound of cure, maybe 10 pounds of cure, since the disease usually shows up on new fish, quarantining for four to six weeks is really your best option. Observe the fish and be so careful. UV filtration has been shown to be effective in eliminating the disease by killing it in the free swimming stages. Once you've had the disease, you can remove all the fish and let the tank run fallow for six to eight weeks. And during this time, the dinos will have nothing to feed upon and supposedly will die out. That goes back to that argument we talked about earlier. Otherwise, you can empty the tank, let everything dry out, or you could bleach the system and start over being sure to do a more than adequate freshwater rinse, rinse after you've bleached the system. But again, you're gonna put the corals back in there. The corals are gonna be wet. It, once you start chasing this thing, it can be difficult. So in my case, I've let the disease run its course. I'm down to five fish, which for whatever reason have beaten it for now. I, I actually do think I'm good. I hope I don't have to eat those words. My cleaner shrimp have been a big help, quite possibly what saved my remaining fish. I've done a lot of re reading about this, and the consensus is with cleaner shrimp that they help, but they don't cure velvet or ick. I'd like to believe that they help my survivors get over the hump. Many of the fish that died camped out with the shrimp, but it wasn't enough. But also the fish that survived camped out with the shrimp, and I've seen the shrimp working on them. I am determined not to tear this tank down. Since the corals are absolutely thriving, my water parameters are spot on. I've done lots of testings. There's never been a noticeable ammonia spike. And really, it's impossible to catch the remaining fish and remove them to another aquarium without taking all the rock work out. So, so even though you've heard it said that hope is not a strategy, well, I'm hoping for the best. I've added 15 watts of UV filtration to zap the free swimming dinos. Hopefully that's helped a little bit. So now that I've been hit, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the quarantine thing. I'll either have to set up another aquarium here at home, which will not make my wife particularly happy. What we need is one more aquarium in the house. Of course, I always think we do, but that's another battle. <laughs> anyway, um, we also have quarantine tanks at Carlin Aquarium Systems in our holding facility, and I could certainly use that. Probably that's the route I'll go, but it's not convenient. It's not on site, so I'd have to travel back and forth, yada, 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 yada. I know I'm complaining and I'm being lazy, so... Um, but I, you know, I do have that option. Uh, now I'm gonna put links to uh, some of my research with the description of this video. There's a lot of threads, there's a lot of good articles out there, so, uh, uh, and it's more in depth than I've been able to present here. So that'll be with the description of this video down in what some people call the towel section down below. Um, I've also started a blog on my journey with Velvet, and you can read that at fincasters.com. That's a little bit more detailed even than I've been able to go here, and that's got some good links in it as well. I do post lots of pictures of fish, corals, my planted tanks, you name it, on the FinCasters Instagram account, and lots of interesting articles and photos from the hobby on the FinCasters Facebook page. I've also started a Facebook group for those of you who watch FinCasters, and I would invite you to join that. Again, there'll be a link down below where you can click, and all you have to do is request to join. Tell me whether you have a freshwater or saltwater aquarium, and I will automatically, instantly add you to the group and encourage you to post post uh, pictures of, of uh, your particular aquarium, your fish, your reef, your plants, you know, whatever it is that you're thinking about with your fish tank. And then if you want to start a discussion, maybe you want to talk a little bit about your history with velvet uh, or ick um, or, or anything that comes to mind, that's, that's what that group is there for. I've just started it. Uh, I think we've still got less than 20 members, but I've been pleased because I've been getting a, a pretty good steady number. You know, every day I've got another request or two, but it's very early on right here in late 2017. So by all means, please uh, jump in and let's get that thing going. Let's see each other's tanks and let's have some conversations. Uh, and of course, uh, I want to hear your comments on this video down below. Maybe some of your history uh, again with these same topics or if I've missed something that you think is important to point out, uh, by all means, uh, hit it there in the comments down below this video. Now I've covered many, many other uh, freshwater and saltwater topics uh, on this FinCasters channel here on YouTube. So um, please uh, either look 
at the website, fincasters.com, or click around because this is, I don't know, we're coming up on 180 videos now. So uh, click around, see if you see something that you like, and please, please, please hit that subscriber button. It really does mean a lot to me, and a lot of work goes into this, and I, I appreciate the fact that uh, you think it's worth following along. So if you'd hit the subscriber button, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.